Wizards. When we think of wizards, we think of weathered old man, men over 200 years old. But this author wanted to show people that wizards weren't all all-knowing and wise like they are now. They were young ones. And this book is about a rise of a wizard. Hello, fellow book questers! It's I, Aaron the Book Quester. Today I have this epic, awesome fantasy book for you guys to review. Earth Sea Psycho, A Wizard of Earth Sea by Ursula K. Lee Gwynn. And well, let's get right on to it. As I said, this book is about the rise of a young wizard. And he was born as a blacksmith's son. And he was lazy and he was always exploring. And one day he found out that he had the knack of magic. And he learned how to weave spells from the village witch. But he had four greater gifts than that. And soon enough, a wizard, a wizard named Ojeon the Silent, came to take him away and to train him to become the wizard that he could be. But our dear Jed was too impatient, and Ogion was, well, infinitely patient. His path was a long, slow path of sol solitude, and to gain the powers of wizardry, slowly, but surely. But our dear Jed, as he, that's, that's his real name, that's the, not the name that was given to him by his mother, that's the name. The name. You see, magic works that way. In the ancient language, everything in the world has a name. And with that name, that's how you weave spells. And well, he wants to learn those words to to make spells, but Ochian just didn't teach him anything for a, for a couple months, only herb gathering and stuff like that. And one day, his pride, his envy, and, well, his impatience led to him leafing through books that he wasn't supposed to go through. Books of, well, summoning the dead, doing dangerous spells, like shifting into other animals. And then he was almost destroyed by those spells, and Ojeon came in and blasted the, ch the darkness away. And he told Jed that if he wanted to learn the magic fast and, and be taught all those powers really fast, all those cool powers, well, Jed, he had, he, he had to go. He had to go to an island, and on that island is a school. A school for wizards. Sounds familiar? You know, da na 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 I don't even, I don't even have to say it. Anyway, if we continue on, Jed there, he is trained as a wizard, but soon enough he is goaded again, by this time by an older wizard in training apprentice named Jasper. Jasper goads our dear poor old Jed, who nicknamed himself Sparrowhawk, because if everyone else knows his true name, then he could be controlled. He, our dear Sparrowhawk, he decided that he was going to summon the dead, he was goaded into that, and when he summoned the spirit, it was a shadow. You see, what led to the situation was Ged's anger, Ged's hatred for Jasper, and Ged's impatience and envy and pride. That's what led to this, to all, it's like all the bad parts of Jed led to this one shadow. A nameless shadow from the realms of the dead that strove to kill Jed. And Jed was knocked out for months and he, when he woke up he was behind on every single study. And well it sucked. Oh oops. Um, anyway, it sucked and he woke up and he's trained and trained. And he knew that once he graduated, once he became a full-blown wizard and outside the safety of the wizard school, he would be hunted by the shadow that he had unleashed into the world. And he knew, and he was equally scared of the fact that the shadow 
if it took hold of him and went inside him and corrupted him and used his powers, would destroy mankind. And the Jed trained and trained and he and then he finally he won his staff and his cloak. He became a full-blown wizard. His first deed was to fight against a dragon. He found out the dragon's true name and forced him, forced him to stop, not attack the village, a villages and or settlements near the dragon's lair. And uh, and Jed was tempted sorely by the dragon. The dragon saying that he would teach Jed the true name of the shadow, which. Jed highly doubted, but of course the dragon could have known the name, but that didn't matter. Dragons rarely helped humankind, and when they did, they always wanted that for their own ends, which meant that the dragon was probably, you know, plotting something very evil. Which meant that Jed ignored him and just made him swear that he would never go near those humans. Then he went to, he was chased. The shadow chased him, chased him, and he stood to fight, but his staff broke and he could not fight against the evil shadow that he has unleashed into the world. And he was chased into a castle where a beautiful lady, uh, the Lady of O, showed him that a stone, a talking stone, could give him the power, making the greatest wizard of them all, to defeat the shadow and become the king of the world. And although Jed is sorely tempted by the stone, he knows the story. The story of a great dragon lord, a wizard, who, who by the talking stone, did what it said and became the slave of it. And his soul was destroyed and the stone took a hold of the wizard and a great evil was created. And he knew those stories well enough and he refused. And then the shadow chased him yet again. And the shadow chased him, and he fought and fought valiantly with his all his magic. But the shadow fought well, and Jed too was quite formidable. But finally, he he shape shifted, and he managed to come back to come back to Ojeon's humble old cottage. There, Jed realizes that Ojeon is his true master, the one who truly has master's wizardry, the one, the silent one. And Oj and he tells Jed tells Ojeon that he had come back as he had left a fool. And o Ojeon and Jed chose true respect to Ojeon, saying that he is he is his true master. And Ojeon says that one day you will be his master, and he, you he will be teaching Ojeon himself. And Jed was his little pet talk. And Ojeon gives him advice, advice to hunt the hunter, to hunt the shadow and destroy it by any means possible. And, and well, he hunts the shadow and he fights and fights and the battle between good and evil, the shadow, which is, which was led into all of, all of, or all of the bad parts of Jed, the human parts of Jed, the arrogance, the pride, those parts of them. Those parts of it all molded inside to that evil, vile thing that he had to defeat. And I feel like that that is really awesome. And that, that really shows the battle between good and evil, the conflict of emotion, the battle inside a wizard. And now we know that wizards aren't, weren't born all powerful and all knowing and wise. They were impatient, arrogant and prideful too. It's just that they learned, maybe not as drastically as this, and as in this book, but they learned. And it is really interesting, a great book, and I'm not gonna tell you the ending. Although, I'll say this, it says that Jed's Lord Sparrowhawk, which is Jed's nickname, was became the greatest of them all and was told in songs and in stories, and he was one of the greatest wizards of them all. He became to be. But before that, he was Jed, and that's how the story starts and ends. And well, great book. And since we know that in the future he'll become a way greater wizard than he is right now, we know he'll live. But we don't know what state, which is what gives the story its thrill. 
And like always, your bookquester and the bookquester. Great book, guys, a must read, and, well, I'm totally ready for the next book. The Tombs of Atuma. Atuma.